Hello, in this music composition tutorial you'll see the sketching process starting from a pair of 6 element pitch class sets and the combined application of set theory and Schillinger system composition techniques. This tutorial is built around a short example composition for synthesizers and orchestral instruments. Let's introduce this episode. On my channel there are many tutorials about specific composition techniques, the majority from the Schillinger system of musical composition. Over the last year there have been many requests for a more detailed demonstration of the sketching and composition process. So recently I created this series of 4 tutorials around an orchestral cue. In this video there is a new example, a synthesizer orchestral piece where I'll demonstrate the combination of pitch class set theory and Schillinger system composition techniques. I'll discuss the characteristics of the 10 sections in detail with diagrams, audio and staff notation examples. If you would like to support the production of these YouTube videos, you may do so through a one-time PayPal donation or become a channel patron. The example composition is based on a pair of hexachords, two six element pitch class sets. You'll see the combination of composition techniques from atonal set theory and from the Schillinger system. And at the end of this tutorial there is the full example composition. Now you'll meet the two six element pitch class sets. Top left is the set 6, 12 in staff notation and represented in the pitch class disc diagram on the right. I chose this set from the 50 options with 6 pitch units because it has what I call here the maximum dissonance property. On the right observe many neighboring pitch classes, intervals of either 1 or 2 semitones. These correspond to the values n1 is 3 and n2 is 3 in the 6 element interval class vector. Two tips, go to my website and open the pitch class set graphical toolkit page. There you'll find easy set inspection and manipulation tools, most useful for writing atonal music phrases. For a more theoretical approach, watch the series of 5 tutorials on all set families on this channel. The other set, 649, is shown at the bottom. I chose this set because it has more or less maximum consonance property, that is, a maximum value for the sum of the 3 elements n3, n4 and n5 in the interval class vector. Both sets are shown in original and inverted form, as ascending or descending scales. The original form in the disc diagram is the closest spacing in clockwise rotation direction and yields the 6 pitch classes shown in braces. When composing with pitch class sets one may focus on the tonal music potential. Here you see how the C major triad is included in the set 612. Or instead aim for an atonal mood, as these two layered hexachord voicings demonstrate. Combining several transposed original and inverted forms yields this two layer strata harmony chord progression that will return later in the video. That is what I typically do in the sketching phase. Write down ideas, test them out on the piano or in music notation software and then decide to reject or apply these sketches in the composition. The end result is an almost two and a half minute long example composition based on the two six element pitch class sets. The score is 79 measures long, a piece for synthesizers and orchestral instruments. The form diagram reveals a subdivision into 10 sections. Each section may focus on a specific set and use a single or a combination of composition techniques from either set theory or the Schillinger system. My typical workflow is creating a draft on score paper or directly into Dorico, then 
implement and edit the project in the Cubase DAW before returning to Dorico for notating a full score. Let's look at the composition techniques used in this example composition. Here you see the overview diagram with composition techniques from pitch class set theory and the Schillinger system of musical composition. At the top center find the source sets and the basic transformations, transposition and inversion. The diagram shows techniques in the subdomains harmony, melody and rhythm. A strict separation between these domains often is not possible. Many techniques and the notation have been adopted from the Schillinger system of musical composition, a two volume book set with a scientific mathematical approach to the creation of music and about which I've published many tutorials on this channel, including two introductory episodes. On the other hand, I use tools and techniques from this Alan Forte textbook on atonal music. This book discusses set labeling and classification, and his system has been implemented in the web tool I mentioned earlier. I did many demonstrations of writing atonal music for video, including this product trailer scoring competition I participated in a couple of years ago. Warning, I did not win. This diagram returns frequently as we discuss individual composition techniques in the next subsections. The first aspect is the extended use of pedal point in the example composition. We use a single or double pitch class from the original set as pedal point. This becomes a sustained pitch in bass or upper part. In the Schillinger system of musical composition a pedal point may function as a primary axis in tonal music. It is the tonic degree of the scale. I did a fairly recent episode demonstrating pedal point and primary axis in an atonal context. In the example composition, any pitch unit from the set may act as tonic degree. I decided to focus on the pitch class C as the primary axis and use it extensively. Here's the opening lead part pedal point, a sustained pitch C for synthesizers and piccolo. You'll hear it in the full composition audio at the end of the tutorial. I also use double pedal point. In this example, pitch class units G in the bass and E flat in the lead are the result of a careful selection of transposed original and inverted forms of the set 649. You'll see this strata harmony progression in more detail later. A mechanism for chord tension control is the focus on either consonant or dissonant intervals in the six element sets. Remember that my pitch class set selection was based on the characteristics of the interval class vector. Here we aim for maximum consonants in both pitch class sets by extracting all options for major and minor third intervals and creating a two part phrase. We start with set 612. I've marked the major and minor third intervals with green and brown arrows. From the interval class vector we know there are four options. Then I created a two part continuity from the third intervals in the set original and inverted form, shown here at the top. I liked this effect and decided to use it as a gentle, delicate phrase for piano. Here you see the setting in section 3. There's a harmonic rhythm, not all intervolic structures being equally long. Repeat this exercise for set 649, which has a total of 7 options, the sum of 4 and 3 in the interval class vector. Here's a short phrase with all major third intervals in the inversion form. This sketch did not make it into the example composition. Another sketch, using a sequence of many major thirds from the same set was used in the opening section, also a phrase for piano, playing softly in the mid-high register, below an upper part pedal point. The piano phrase is embellished with passing tones.
Let's go for the opposite effect and find possible combinations of dissonant intervals. Look at the options for minor and major second intervals in the set 649. This set contains two minor and two major second intervals, since both n1 and n2 are equal to 2. From these options create a two-part continuity with specific lead part envelope. Somewhere in the middle of the piece this becomes an eerie texture for synthesizers, over a pounding rhythm. Note the sequence major 9th, major 7th, minor 9th, then major 9th interval. This is doubled in high register violin. The contrast with the earlier smooth piano phrases is obvious. We now turn our attention to diatonic triads, contained in the pitch class sets. These are three part subsets that consist of the stacking of three and four semitone intervals. In the original form of set 612 there is the C major triad. The inversion form similarly contains the F minor triad. Now let's create a two layer hexachord voicing with the F minor triad in the lower layer and the remaining three pitch units from 612 in the upper layer. These form an incomplete major 7th chord, and here's the resulting dissonant voicing. Now let's inspect pitch class set 649. When looking for triadic structures in the original form, we identify the A major and the C minor triads. Or this layered hexachord combination of two stacked diminished triads, that yields almost an altered A dominant 7 chord in inversion position voicing. The combination of original and inversion form enables writing this triadic progression. And here's another continuity of major and minor triads, derived from the original and inversion form of the set. This progression was used in the composition in section 2. Listen to this triadic texture in mid-high register for synthesizers as sustained chords with harmonic rhythm. After investigating the triadic content in both sets, you'll see how these may turn into a melodic phrase. In this approach there is no clear distinction between the harmony and melody domain. The technique is used in two sections. We'll hear the first now, a melody for solo violin derived from the triad progression that we discussed a moment ago. It has two parallel melodic axes stressing the chromatic and stepwise motion. The setting is three layer strata harmony with a pedal point and a counter melody that will be heard in the full ensemble audio at the end. Another technique in the melody domain is the use of a specific melodic form. Melodic forms and continuity are discussed in this video tutorial about pitch scales. A different melodic form is obtained by reordering the pitch units from the scale. Here I use the pattern P1, P2, P6, P5 
an incomplete scale C, C sharp, G, F sharp, with the characteristic augmented fourth interval. I liked the result and applied it in the composition, in the middle section as simple rhythm triplet patterns with neighboring tones for synthesizer. A similar descending triplet rhythm pattern is used just before the previous phrase. This time the source is the first expansion E1 of the inversion form of set 649. This yields a set of descending third leaps and you'll hear it in the full audio rendering at the end. Next we generalize the subset concept, that is, any multipart structure of pitch units included in the six element source material not necessarily being standard triadic structures. In this subsection consider three part subset structures that include a major or minor third interval. We will not look for all options but instead present a few examples. We start with set 612 and in both the original and inversion form a trichord with third interval has been marked with orange arrows. On the left we see the C sharp minor with major 7 structure, on the right it is the B flat dominant 7 with 3 omitted. The remaining pitches are used in close position voicing in a chord continuity shown at the top. The occurrence of the third interval leads to a somewhat diatonic flavor, but the progression is intertwined with far more dissonant structures. For the next technique we identify three neighboring pitch units in the set 612. With these we create a two layer setting with chromatically ascending bass and the other pitches as trichord in the upper layer. Obviously there is a similar pattern in the inversion form of the set, but this time the result is a descending bass part. The essence here is that when you find a subset with specific melodic character, use that as a moving part in one layer and then use the other pitch units from the atonal set in a sustained more static layer. The next subset category is the collection of tetrachords. We'll build phrases and sections with specific four part structures. I used the pitch class set website toolkit to look for the presence of tetrachords in the set 649. Here you see the position of the 425, 426 and 427 tetrachord subsets. The two latter tetrachords may be written as minor or dominant seventh chords as the upper staff at the top shows, with the transposition value indicated. The six part voicing has the remaining pitches in the lower layer. The nice thing is that the three chord structure continuity has both static parts such as the pitch classes G and A that could be used as pedal point, plus a number of stepwise or chromatically moving other parts. This lends itself to meaningful orchestration in a strata harmony setting. An example of chromatically moving inner parts in a continuity with three tetrachord subsets is shown on the right. I like this idea and created a sketch with a succession of transposed original forms of the three tetrachord subsets. We obtain a chromatically ascending voice in combination with three static parts. The phrase ends on the full 612 hexachord. This harmonic continuity is used in the middle section as sustained chords for synthesizer pad in fairly open voicing.
We saw earlier how I derived a solo violin melody from a triadic continuity in measures 10 to 17. Here's the same approach, but now the violin melody is derived from the tetrachord progression. The melody is in low register and embellished slightly. Note the melodic shape as marked with arrows. After discussing the potential of working with subsets, now we'll turn our attention to writing with complete hexachord structures. A suitable approach is the application of strata harmony. I did a number of strata harmony tutorials, but here are two examples. One somewhat older and based on a single pitch class set, and the other a recent and more fundamental discussion of this Schillinger technique. Look at these two hexachord example voicings for 612 distributed over two trichord layers. These two definitely have different chord tension level, an aspect discussed in this video tutorial. Remember when we discussed the triad content in the six element sets. Here's the F minor triad from the inversion position set, which returns in the lower layer, with the remaining three pitches in the upper strata harmony layer. I did not use this isolated chord structure, but instead experimented with a four hexachord continuity that uses different transposed original and inversion forms of the set. As written, note that there is voice crossing between the layers. That is fine in a homogeneous orchestration setting with cluster voicing, but some parts would require octave transposition for more transparent orchestration in strata harmony. Also notice how each layer has a constant pitch unit that could be used as pedal point. This six part phrase is used in section 7, in a very low register for three horns and three trombones. The synthesizer bass part with its leaps and quarter note time unit based rhythm is derived from the hexachord progression. The bass part is doubled with synthesizer with a pulsating modulator component. In this progression I looked for transposed original and inversion forms of set 649 that yield double pedal point. There is the pitch unit E flat in the lead and the G in the bass. This continuity has closest neighbor voice leading for the remaining four parts, the tetrachords in the middle. All these have altered and diminished chord flavor. Orchestrate this three layer strata harmony setting with pedal point in bass and lead as a climax duty setting near the end of the piece. First you'll hear the middle layer as sustained synthesizer part, high and low pedal point for strings doubled with a contrasting synthesizer pad sound. Supporting the Tutti Climax effect and in order to create more motion I modified the upper layer. It has become a set of descending scalar patterns for woodwinds in imitation. The scales are the local close position form of the transposed pitch class set. The rhythm is simple with 16th note time unit. Thank you. 
Note that the woodwinds are crossing strata harmony layers. Normally this should be avoided when using homogeneous instrumentation, but here the contrasting orchestration allows still to discern each separate orchestral section. The same layer crossing approach is used in another orchestral layer. The unisono motifs for either three horns or trombones in a low mid register. The bass part is derived from the local hexachord harmony and adds drive to this tutti section. So note that each layer in this strata setting has its individual time unit as basis for an instrumental form. Now you'll hear a counter melody with parallel diverging melody axes. The use of melody axes is covered in the Schillinger system of musical composition as a technique for tension control when writing melody. In two middle sections I applied this free counter melody for synthesizer with chromatically diverging melodic axes and simple rhythm. One may derive a hexachord continuity that includes the counter melody pitch classes in the two sets. Pay attention to these parts in the full composition audio rendering at the end. Finally we study the closing section in more detail. The composition techniques include hexachord harmony turned into a variable density setting and in addition I developed a rhythm based on a Euclidean pattern. We return to the hexachord progression you saw earlier in section 371 as strata harmony in two three part layers. This progression is modified into a variable density setting. That subject is covered in a number of tutorials, but you may want to watch this video. I picked pitch unit subsets from the original six part setting. The order is three, five, four, six parts. The most dense setting therefore at the end and gradually the chord tension level is rising. The other element is the Euclidean rhythm. The time unit is the quarter note and I modified the 732 Euclidean rhythm pattern. Listen to the synthesizer pad playing the variable density harmony with a second pulsating synthesizer providing the rhythmic groove. The next layer in this strata harmony setting is the synthesizer bass, with both neighboring notes and wide leaps. Another element is the doubling of the variable density harmony as woodwind stabs and crescendo sustained chords for brass section. Time now to listen to the full composition a MIDI mockup created as a Cubase project. All samples were loaded into a Vienna Ensemble Pro server project. Here's an overview of the effect plugins used in the DAW. You'll now hear the audio rendering while playing a movie of the annotated reduced score. On my website there's the full score plus a companion document for my patrons.
In this rather long video tutorial, there's another demonstration of the music sketching and composition process. The case study here is the combination of pitch class set theory and Schillinger system techniques. I used two six element sets as source material, one with maximum dissonance, the other with maximum consonance property. From these elements, you saw the creation of chord progressions, melodic phrases, and multi part, multi layer strata harmony sections. One may strengthen the tonal mood by incorporating pedal point or diatonic triad structures, or instead go for an atonal idiom with higher tension level voicings. I discussed the application of these composition techniques in the various sections from the example composition. Patrons may have a look at the companion document. If you found this tutorial useful, subscribe to the channel and be alerted for future episodes. Support my video production efforts through a single PayPal donation or become a regular supporter as a patron. The links are in the description. Go to the website for more content or for purchasing ebooks on musical analysis, arranging for orchestra and Schillinger rhythm. Thanks for watching.